Welcome back. It's that time. It's Friday, and we are back with our friend Christopher Lloyd from the Film Yap, who always lets us know what movies are worth checking out. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Welcome back. Always fantastic to be here and see you two. Yes. We love your recommendations. We have another great lineup coming up today, but we have to talk about Jurassic World. Everybody has been talking about this movie. We need Chris's take on yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most anticipated movies of the summer, according to all those polls that they take. And I have to say, the, the critical reaction from the critics has not been great oh, so far. Really? Okay. It's pretty, pretty negative, particularly the local critics, you know. Huh. Uh, I just say, I'm, I'm on the outside, I actually like this movie quite a bit. Did okay. you? Um, it's, it's not one of the best of the Jurassic movies, but the first half is kind of a mess because they're bringing back all of the original crew, uh, Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, pairing them up, of course, with Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard from sort of the new, the next generation of Jurassic World. Yeah. So they're kind of like moving pieces around during that first half, setting up the super villain, which is they've got an island where they've brought all of the dinosaurs supposedly to, you know, help preserve them. But of course, they have all sorts of evil intent and scientific tinkering going on. Okay. So our folks have to go in and save the day. So like I say, the first half of the movie, definitely a bit of a mess, but the last half is chases, thrills, Dinosaurs chomping people, dinosaurs nice. chomping other dinosaurs, nice. and all the cool stuff you want to see. Well, so, you'd expect. Yeah. 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 So I enjoyed it, although I will tell you, I'm a little bit on the outlier on this one. Okay. All right. I was going to ask if there were any velociraptors, and then I saw oh, them come yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Tiger then, then 24. Then you got the question answered, yeah. <laughs> so this is cool. This is a very unique film experience. Tiger 24 is a documentary about a real case of a dinosaur in India that was accused of being a man-eater, and then became like this national outcry of people wanting to save, save the tiger, all these things about the, the interaction between humans and tigers and you know what's being done. And here's a really cool thing is this movie is having its North American premiere right here in Indianapolis at Living Room Theaters. Only, wow. Literally the only place in the world you can watch this movie right now. And the director is going to be on hand to do Q&As after screenings this weekend. Okay. So head on over there to check that out. It's a good documentary, very fascinating. Sort of like just the, the conflict between nature and humans wow. uh, and, wow. and how it became a big media sensation. Wow. Just a majestic face. Yes. <laughs> you know? When he's not eating people. When he's not eating people. <laughs> that's the quote of the day right there. I just, what a all majestic all face. That tiger's like like, you know I could eat you, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, uh, call it that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go to Benediction, okay. Chris. Yes, yeah, benediction. what's this one all so about? So this is an independent film. It's about a um, real-life uh, soldier poet named Siegfried Sassoon. And be despite that, he was actually a British soldier. Okay. And he came back from the war and had lots of conflicting feelings of being gay, writing, like, anti-war poetry. Huh. Um, that uh, got a big following. He was a very celebrated poet. And then it follows him later in life where, although he was a closeted gay man, um, he ended up having all these different affairs but ended up marrying a woman that he seemed to have really fallen in love and actually converted to Catholicism late in life. And then had the, another actor takes over the role. It's a very interesting portrait of a real person with one of these messy, chaotic lives that don't necessarily fit into a normal biopic yeah. sort of parameters. Okay. Do you think he, like, is he well known over in the UK? Yeah. If you're okay. into poetry, yeah. particularly from that area, era, I mean, nowadays probably more like literature professors, okay. but. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So now we're moving to streaming. Miss Marvel? Yes. What's going on with this so one? So this is the latest Disney uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, iteration. So this is a limited series. I believe it's six episodes, six or eight episodes. Uh, and I've only seen the first two. That's all I let that show us. But so this is cool because it's a very different sort of superhero. It's a 16-year-old teenager. She's a Pakistani-American um, and a Muslim who lives in Jersey City. Uh, and so not the sort of girl. As she puts it in the, in the show, brown girls from Jersey cities usually aren't the ones that get to save the world. Uh, and so it's about her discovering her powers, which... Um, as a result of a, a piece of jewelry sent to her from her great grandmother, lets her unleash all these cool, glowing powers. Neat. And but really, it, the, at least the first episode, it's not so much about powers, and there's no super villain that emerges, and all that standard sort of yeah. hero stuff. It's about this teen sort of contextualizing herself within her community, within her faith, and things going on. Really terrific performance from the lead actresses. I'm looking forward to seeing the last few episodes. Okay, Miss Marvel. Yeah. Oh, check wow. that out. Okay, now, Chris, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, we we've been waiting this for this. So, your favorite movie of all time. Your yeah. favorite so movie? So, one yeah. of the questions you always get as a film critic is, what's your favorite movie? Mm -hmm. And for years and years, I was never able to give an answer, because yeah. I would be like, it's like choosing amongst your children. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. tastes change. If you'd asked me that question when I was 15. That's true. Might be different from now, but... Yeah. In the last 10 or 15 years, I've been able to say, yes, um, my favorite movie of all time, and which is now out uh, on a cool new steelbook, is <gasps> The Bridge on the River Drum Kwai. Right. Okay. This is a David Lean epic um, starring Alec Guinness, William Holden, a bunch of other terrific actors. It's a prisoner of war film. 
um, loosely based on truth, uh, about these guys trying to escape while building a bridge for the brutal uh, Japanese colonel there who was overseeing them. From David Lean, just one of my all-time favorite movies, and it's out in this handsome steel book oh. that's both Blu-ray and 4K Ultra HD. Okay. You can go buy it right now. I'm a big physical media guy. I mean, I stream as much as everybody sure. else with my yeah. kids. Yeah. But if you really love a movie, drop a few bucks so yeah. you can have your own perfect digital copy forever. That's I what I do. That bridge oh, over wow. River Kwai. I right. would love, I, we ran out of time, but I would love to know more about why. Yes. So I'm going to have to ask you that. I have written whole essays about it, <laughs> which you can go see. You can actually go see there it. There it is. And here we are. There's the segue. Go right there. Right there. Filmyep.substack.com, where you can get Chris's reviews and his teams as well. You can subscribe and follow him on Facebook and Twitter. Chris, Chris thanks as always. Yeah, thank always you, a pleasure. Chris. Yeah, it's so much fun having you on. Yeah, this is your favorite movie on watching yeah. it. Yeah.